All right, welcome back to our unit here on solutions. Today's topic is unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated solutions. Okay, lesson two of three, your objectives are as follows. To understand what factors increase the rate of dissolution or dissolving. To understand the difference between an unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated solutions. Okay, to learn how to calculate stoichiometry problems that involve solutions. For your quick write. Okay. If you wanted to increase the rate in which sugar will dissolve in your tea, what are some things you could do to increase the rate of dissolution or dissolving process? Okay. What do you think affects how fast salt will dissolve in water? What do you think will dissolve faster in a cup of water, a cube of sugar or a spoonful of sugar? And do you think there is a limit to how much salt can dissolve in a given amount of water? Okay. Go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. Okay, so factors affecting the rate of dissolution or dissolving. All right, so here we have a solid. What are some ways we could speed up, okay, and make that sub the solid dissolve faster? Well, okay, one way is temperature, all right? Temperature causes the molecules to move faster, increasing the rate of dissolution, dissolving the solid even faster. So if we speed up the, the temperature, okay, the solid will dissolve even faster, okay? The next thing we could do, well, aside from temperature, is to stir it. Stirring removes newly dissolved particles from the solid surface and continuously exposes fresh or new surface okay, for the solvent or water molecules. And then the third way okay, is surface area. So notice, we have two solids here. These have a greater surface area, all right? So when considering surface area, smaller salt crystals or particles will have a greater surface area and will therefore dissolve faster. So notice these have already dissolved, okay? The one down here is still dissolving, okay? Because it has a smaller surface area, okay? So what factors affect the rate of dissolution? Temperature, molecules move faster, stirring exposes new surface, and then increasing surface area. Smaller particles or crystals have a greater surface area, okay, and will therefore dissolve faster. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so unsaturated solutions. So here we have some water and a solvent, okay. So a solution that has not reached the limit of solute that will dissolve in it is said to be unsaturated. So in other words, we could add more salt to this, okay, and more will dissolve. It is unsaturated, okay? So in other words, it is a solution that is able to dissolve more solute at a particular temperature, okay? If we were to add more solute, salt, okay, it would continue to dissolve because the solution is unsaturated. Okay, so it can hold more solute, essentially. All right, so saturated solutions. At a particular temperature, there is a limit to how much solute or salt that can dissolve in a solution. The solvent, okay, water in this case, can only dissolve so much solute at a particular temperature. Okay, so let's add more salt or solute to our unsaturated solution here and see what happens. So notice, it did not dissolve. It remained a solid at the bottom here. Okay. So eventually, okay, it would stop dissolving and solid would form at the bottom here. When a solution can no longer dissolve the solute at a particular temperature, we say the solution is saturated. No more solute will dissolve, okay, and any solute you add, okay, will just form at the bottom here. So, in other words, the solute or salt will no longer dissolve at that certain, at a certain temperature, okay? All right, so supersaturated solutions. Consider our previous saturated solution here. Okay, it's saturated because no 
more solute will dissolve, right? So, but what would happen if we heated it up? Well, let's find out. So we, we're adding heat here, the temperature is going up. Okay, notice it starts dissolving as we heat it up. So the solute or salt will dissolve and become aqueous. Okay. So if we let the solution though slowly cool back to its original temperature, the solute will remain dissolved in solution. Okay, so we're letting it cool. And notice it did not form a solid. It's still dissolved at its original temperature. This type of solution is called a supersaturated solution. It contains more dissolved solute then a saturated solution will hold at a particular temperature. Okay, a supersaturated solution is very unstable. If you add a crystal, okay, to it, it will often cause the immediate precipitation of the solid. Okay. So for your notes, what is the difference between an unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated solution? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so solutions and stoichiometry calculations. So consider the above reaction. Okay, sodium bicarbonate is used to neutralize an acid spill. So if one of you guys was to spill some acid, okay, I would put some sodium bicarbonate on it to neutralize it. Well, let's say you spilled 2.5 liters of a 0.1 molar HCl solution. How many grams of sodium bicarbonate would I need to neutralize the spill? All right, so. Step one here, substitute the values into the molarity expression and solve for moles of solute. Okay, so let's put our liters in. Let's put our molarity in here. Okay, solve for moles of solute. Okay, so we're dividing here. We're going to multiply over here. Okay, solving for moles of solute, we get 0.25 moles of HCl. Okay, all right. So, not quite done yet. Step two, use stoichiometry and solve for grams of sodium bicarbonate. So we have moles of this, we need to solve for grams of sodium bicarbonate. So let's do that. Okay, we have 0.25 moles of HCl. According to our balanced chemical reaction here, we have, okay, one mole of HCl requires one mole of sodium bicarbonate, our mole ratio there, and one mole of sodium bicarbonate, okay, has a molar mass of 84 grams. All right, our units cancel. Okay, and we get 22 grams of sodium bicarbonate. I would need to put on that spill to completely neutralize it. Okay, all right. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and practice here. When you're ready to check your work, hit play. All right, let's see how you did. So step one, substitute the values in the molarity expression and solve for moles of solute. So let's do that. We have liters here and we have molarity here, okay? Now solving for moles of solute, we're dividing here. So we're gonna multiply on this side, okay? And we get, okay, 0.25 moles of NaCl. All right, step two. Okay, use stoichiometry and solve for grams of silver chloride here. Okay, so we have 0.25 moles of sodium chloride. We know one mole of sodium chloride will produce one mole of silver chloride. Okay, and we know that one mole of silver chloride has a molar mass of, our units cancel, okay, and we get, 35.83 grams of silver chloride. All right, so go ahead and summarize. You can always write your own. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you work on your summary, and we'll see you next time.